how did you when did your love of hockey start and when did you uh realize you wanted to be a referee well first of all uh i'm a canadian eh and uh, <laughs> <laughs> so my dad played pro hockey uh he was in the international hockey league uh he played in scotland when he was 19 years old in the scottish international hockey league uh they were all canadian guys they had a tryout at Toronto uh, Maple Leaf Gardens, and uh, my dad grew up with Bill Barilko, who was a Toronto Maple Leaf. Disappeared. Uh, sc- killed summer. in the plane crash yeah, uh, after scoring the song. winning goal uh, to win the Stanley Cup for the Leafs. So dad stayed oh. at Bill's place and uh, wow. the tryout that's, thing. That's and amazing. He made the team, made the league, and they went over on a ship, and uh, he played in Falkirk for a year. Uh, I may have some relatives over there as a result. I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe siblings. I don't know. But uh, he, uh, you know, with the last name Fraser, um, he's got that Scottish ancestry that we all have. Uh, so I was skating when I was 15 months old. As soon as I Incredible. could walk, wow. I would go to dad's practices and uh, the trainer would put my skates on and I'd go out and, and I'd had a stick that held up as soon as i could walk i was banging a puck in uh, yeah. in our kitchen and uh we lived with uh, took care of my uh my great grandfather and uh, he had a cane and he was the goalie <laughs> yeah. so i was like a year old and i'm i'm whacking pucks at him and balls and so the love of the game as a canadian is instilled in us we grew up on backyard rinks uh i played uh triple a all-star hockey from from peewee bantam midget and then went on to play junior. Uh, I finished playing junior A uh, as the captain of the Sarnia team. Uh, Mark Howe was the last player that I played against uh, that played in the NHL. Wow. Uh, he was with the Detroit Junior Red Wings. Uh, his mom, Colleen, was the general manager of the team, and, and Billy Day was the, uh, was the coach, former Red Wing. Uh, so I was a good little player. Uh, my dad was also a boxer, Riley. You'll, no, no way. Yeah, and he was really a tough guy. Forearms like Popeye, he had the anchors on them. And uh, so he taught me how to fight when I was 12 years old uh, in our kitchen. And uh, he'd knock me down and, and he'd say, you got to keep your hands up, keep your hands up. And boom, I'd go down, he'd just, you know, open palm, slap me down. And uh, I got it. I, I finally <laughs> got it. And I was a lefty. And I had bony hands, and, and I could cut guys, and I hated bullies. Absolutely hated bullies. So we were playing AAA midget. We had five guys on our team that went on to play in the NHL. Wayne Merrick was uh, f- a four-time Stanley Cup winner. Uh, we had Bob Neely, first pick uh, of the Toronto Maple Leafs on D. He was six foot at that time playing midget. So we had some really good players. And we were playing in this, uh, you'll love this, we were playing in the aftermath of the Silver Stick Tournament for midget players. It was called the Silver Blades. We're playing in Port Huron, McMoran Arena. We're in the final. We're playing against this Michigan team, and they had a big guy on defense that was dirty, and he was sticking our guys. And, and Dad, the coach, said, boys, be disciplined, be disciplined. We're going to win the game, win the game. So no penalties. Okay, so five minutes left with all these big guys on the team. Taps me on the shoulder. He said, go teach that big guy a lesson. Oh, <laughs> I could fight better scared than they could mad typically. <laughs> yeah. And you know what's easier to punch up than it is down? Yeah. So I speed bag this guy with both hands, cut him over both eyes. We get thrown out of the game. I'm in the dressing room. The guys come in. We win the championship. Everybody's excited. And uh, I hear this argument out in the hallway. And I hear my dad's voice. And he slipped in the dressing room, locked the door. He came over. He put his arm around me. He said, listen, Carrie. He said, I'm really pr- proud of the way you took care of that kid. He said he needed to be taught a lesson. He was dirty, and he's a bully. He said, well, you took the kid. I don't think you can take his mother. She's out there waiting for you. <laughs> Come on. That's, well, it gets better. Her, Mom. <laughs> he said, I'm serious. we got to get you out of here. She's not leaving. She's waiting for you to come out. Oh, I said, man. okay, well, what do we do? He said, you see that stick bag? I weighed 115 pounds. <laughs> come on. Oh, come on. Get in the stick bag. The old man threw me over his shoulder, zipped me up, and away we go. Walk past the mother. That wow. That is amazing. She was checking all the faces of my teammates. Oh, Impressive. That's amazing. Well, how old were you then? I was uh, midgets, uh, 15, 15, 16. 16, yeah. Uh, so I go away to play junior. I went to Hamilton Red Wings. Eddie Bush was coaching there. And uh, I went through training camp, and... 
I was I was too small. I was like 122 pounds. I really beefed up that summer. <laughs> yeah, all seven pounds. You wasn't on that plan. You were on Ross. <laughs> yeah. You were playing. I didn't do the, the yoga. Seafood, though. Yeah, the seafood yeah, diet, exactly. right? Yeah. So I, I uh, I'm not going to make the team, uh, but he wanted me to be around. So he said, I'm from Collingwood, and they're starting a new junior B team up there, the Collingwood Blues. I'd like to send you there. I said, okay, I'll go. So. Uh, First game, we're playing the Kitchener Rangers. I'm looking back for a pass. Chris Ahrens, who draft pick of the Minnesota North Stars, big defenseman, he was he was close to six foot at that point, and he elbowed me right in the head. And I'm he got two minutes for elbowing. I'm deer in the headlights. I'm staggering back to the bench, shake the cobwebs out. I went, holy jeez! First shift, first game, I got to do something about this. They had a bigger guy than Ahrens on defense, and I went out and fought him, and I beat him. Again, punching up. And so when a little guy beats a big guy, it's embarrassing, right? It's, oh, yeah. it's almost for them, it's a lose-lose, yeah, right? Because right, exactly. if he does beat you, yeah, he's wow, supposed look, to. look at you. Yeah. you know, but well, yeah. he wanted a second round because he wasn't going to settle with the fact that he got beat and I beat him again. And I thought, man, this is great. I, I'm <laughs> going to go through fun. the league and get the big guys. And I did pretty good. And everyone, they left me alone. Wow, a little street cred, right? Yeah, the word sure. went out. Yeah. yeah, I was just up in Collingwood for uh, their Hall of Fame induction thing, and I was their keynote speaker. And uh, it was great to reconnect with some of the guys. I only lived there one year, but man, you know how certain uh, locations have a real yes. impact on yeah. you. And at seventeen, first time away from home, and and uh, so one of the guys that uh, was playing for St. Thomas uh, from up there, he said, "Man, he said, I told our tough guy." Uh, when we went to St. Thomas to play, he said, watch out for that guy. Like, <laughs> leave him alone. He, he, you know, he's, and he's a lefty. So we ended up getting in a fight, and I really gave it to this guy. <laughs> so he said, we're sitting in the dressing room, and uh, he said, uh, one of our other guys said, uh, hey, Rick, uh, can you give us a tip on anybody else that is out there on that <laughs> team that can fight? And we had Frank Beaton on our team, right? Uh, Frankie played in the world hockey, and he called him Frank never been beaten uh. until he lost one and then it was seldom beaten <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, he didn't know the guys didn't know about him because the the guy said yeah give us a tip so we don't get our ass kicked like yeah. our tough guy <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah. that's great anyway how did i become a referee nobody ever wants to be a referee i had a whole bunch of uh division one u.s scholarship offers uh at the end of my last year undrafted little guy um Ted Garvin, who was who played pro with my dad, was coaching Port Huron in the IHL and went on to coach the Detroit Red Wings for a bit. And Ted changed my diapers. He saw me as a kid. And uh, he said, listen, you're a good little player. You play tough. You're not going to make the NHL. And you can play in our league and you can probably play in the American League, but the way you play, you're going to get hurt. He said, why don't you get into officiating? And he handed me a brochure to a referee school. This is 1972. World hockey coming okay. in, mm. opportunity for players for all aspects of the game. So I filled in this uh, this brochure, paid 250 bucks for a five-day camp up in Halliburton, uh, north of Toronto. After day four, I refereed 10 minutes of an uh, intermediate league quality game. Got off, and I didn't know what I was doing, guys, honest to God. I mean, <laughs> but I could skate, and I understood the game as right. a player. So. I get off the ice, and uh, Mr. Frank Udvery, Hockey Hall of Fame referee, assistant director of officiating, meets me in the officials room. He said, Kerry, listen, I really like what I saw, and I'd like to invite you to NHL training camp for officials. Wow. He said, but it's going to happen in like three days, so I got to check with Scotty Morrison, referee-in-chief, to see if there's room for you. I get home from Halliburton, wee hours of the morning on Saturday morning. 10 o'clock, I get a phone call, Frank Udvery. Yep, we got you all set. There's room for you. We want you to come on Sunday. Uh, you report at the uh, Hilton uh, on uh, Airport Road in Toronto, uh, 6 o'clock. And this is what you bring. It's a 10-day camp, so be prepared. Great. Uh, I'm excited, right? I'm going to the NHL officials camp, and I'd never refereed a game in my life. So. <laughs> yeah, right. It's amazing, man. It's so, amazing. So I'm so excited. I pack all my stuff, and, and I'm ready, and I want to get there you know, early. I don't want to be late. So 3 o'clock in the morning, I, I drive from my hometown in Sarnia, 180 kilometers, uh, you know, 150 miles or so to uh, Toronto. 
I get to the front desk. I'm all proud, eh? I'm 20 <laughs> years old. Chest puffed out. Uh, Kerry Fraser uh, here for the NHL uh, referees training camp. The night clerk looked at me and said, man, he said, you're here awful early. We thought you were coming in at 6 o'clock tonight. Oh, no. Uh, I got the 6 o'clock uh, part. But oh, <laughs> it was PM. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what an experience. Oh.